Charles Manson and Hitler had a cult following. So does Dan Burge, or the name de jure he's using. I just can't believe anyone in this information age would believe this fantasy story of his. Go back to the debunking of the phony Dr. Dan Burrish, B-U-R-I-S-C-H, uh, and his phony doctor wife, Marcia McDowell. Uh, but let's give it a trial. See what I'm going to talk about here. Um, Dr. Dan Burrish, he's never been a doctor, has no credentials. Uh, says he was an Area 51 scientist. He's never been to Area 51, has no proof, no documentation. He was never a man in the military and has no con <coughs> DOD contractual license, <coughs> paychecks, reviews, or anything else. Now, so we've established that he was never in the military, never worked for the government, and was it never to Area 51. You can do a lot more research on your own, especially on AlienScientist.com and uh, the Alien Scientist Forum. Uh, this is an article written by uh, Jeff Rentz. He has a hugely popular website. He says, US UFO stories don't get any wilder than this one. A Las Vegas man has developed a cult-like following around the world claiming to have worked with extraterrestrials at Area 51, which he copied from Lazar, obviously. Uh, Jeff went on to say the story told by Dan Burge is a whopper, but can he prove any of it? Uh, George Knapp of the uh, Eyewitness News I team in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, embellished and told stories of Dan's alien adventure and then later on retracted parts of it. Uh, Dan is, is, his name today is Dan Burrish. Before that, he was Dan Castilla, C A T S E L A S. I mean, the guy's all over the internet with his lies, but, uh, and then he was also, uh, let's see, and when Eyewitness News first ran into him, he was Dan Crane, uh, I think a parole officer or some kind of clerk at the county jail. But anyway, uh, this so called phony doctor, Dan Crane, he says, but he is a doctor and he has really been face to face with aliens in, in, in the underground. Uh, no, he's not. Hasn't. <laughs> everything he's ever said is a lie. So, this story is a little bit of everything, including a lot of unanswered questions. When Channel 18 uh, produced this story in 94 about this volunteer teacher and at the Boys and Girls Club, he was introduced as Dr. Dan Crank. At the time, Dan Crane, now known as Dan Burge, was supposedly uh, participating in the most secret programs in the world in existence. But the secret is now out. Burge uh, has a worldwide following, websites, message boards, books, audio tapes, and DVD. So for his fast, vast, phony lion empire, and also a uh, fake stolen valor guy. Uh, he has a publicist and a biographer, a high pro profile secret, high profile for a secret scientist. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine somebody coming out of the CIA and I'm a whistleblower and they get a publicist and a biographer and uh, all these secretaries and everything else to divulge their story. I mean, it, uh, it's almost incredible credible that anybody could believe this guy. Uh, according to uh, Jeff, Burr says he worked at an underground lab at S4 in Area 51, the same place first made public by Bob Lazar inside. Inside, he said he met an extraterrestrial named J-Rod, and they became pals. How wonderful. He also met angels in the lab, and they spoke in Hebrew. Now, let me pause for a second here. First of all, S4 is a radar site at Tonopah. If you, there's been many flyovers. You can see it on Google. You can see them on the internet. You can see a geographical mappings. There's no facilities at S4. Papoose Dry Lake is just that. There are no mountains. They're big hills. 
there's no doys in the hills, there's no doors in the hills. As Lazar described it, there's no parking lot, there's no rails, there's no walkways. All this stuff Bob Lazar described before he thought he could be found out through the internet. None of that exists. Don't believe me. Look it up. S4 is a radar site at Tonopah. Papoose Dry Lake is just a Papoose Dry Lake as a designation. So anyway, let's move on. So, um, he met this guy named J-Rod, an alien, who spoke in Hebrew, which is, uh, I don't know, brings up a lot of questions. You know, why would he just speak English or Chinese? Because, I mean, obviously these, uh, aliens would be so far superior, they wouldn't even need to talk. They don't have to stand through e ESP and all like that. If these angels in the lab spoke the Bob Lazar or Dan Burge in Hebrew, there's no record that they ever had any Hebrew training or even how to speak Hebrew. Must have been a short conversation. Okay. Um, Frenchman's Mountain, Burge discovered the first seas of life on Earth, as he claims. I mean, who believes this stuff? Of course, his doctor head of the MJ-12 committee that rules the fucking earth uh, claims to believe him. Uh, that's... I don't know if that's any credibility for anybody. She swined, signed a sworn affidavit saying she too worked for MJ-12, the secret government. Family friend, uh, Marcia McDonald, another alleged secret agent, supports the story, too. Well, Marcia is not a family friend. She's Dan Birch's wife, and uh, she's got this new website site up for Dan Birch. I don't know if it's Eagles Dare or Eagle Defy or Eagle Soar or whatever. I, I'm going to mention it here and put some posts up later. And then, first of all, you can file an affidavit at your lawyer's office, or even the county clerk's office, and you're Jesus, and you just came back on a flying saucer, and you're claiming all ownership for the earth. Anybody can file a sworn affidavit through many different agencies. It means absolutely nothing. Now, <clears throat> there are photos of Burge's wife and military grab saluting each other. He claimed to be first a captain, then later a major in the military. I and others filed stolen valor against him. And eventually, as the laws change, we will put him in prison because we will never give up on this. I am career military, and I have hundreds of friends who are career military, and there's lots of us out there that will willingly spend time to file stolen valor reports to get these people put in jail. So, warning, Dan Burge, coming after you. Uh, now, he, he, he did have, su supposedly, a sticker on his uh, windshield allowing me access to Nellis Air Force Base. Well, you can do that for any reason. I mean, if you deliver newspapers to Nellis Air Force Base, you're going to have a sticker. If you're a janitor, you're going to have a sticker. If you go up and, and set up the, the baseball field or help out of the golfing field or have any one of 3,000 civilian jobs at base, you have a sticker. So what? Put a sticker on your forehead. That's not going to get you anywhere classified. All the sticker on his window. And first, window stickers are not classified stickers, and they don't allow you access to any classified area. They only allow you on the base proper, period. Now, let's move beyond that. John Alexander. It's highly improbable, says John Alexander, retire, retired Army intelligence. Now, uh, I know John. I respect him. I admired him. Uh, he's one of the most honest guys out there. Now, now John is retired Army intelligence. He said, none asked, what about his Ph.D.? Burr says, and he says, Burr says he earned a doctorate in 1990 at Stony Brook University in New York. The school says he was never a student there. Burr says his records 
were raised, but at the time he supposedly earned his degree at New York Record Show. At the time, Record Show, he had a full time job in Las Vegas as a parole officer. Now, remember later, I will tell you, he's a uh, he also claims he spent 20 years in the military and retired as a major. This guy has been in five different places for 25 years. Apparently, uh, there's still a lot of you out there that believe uh, all this bullshit. So, uh, he says he flew back and forth to school to get... Uh, his degree, which are ridiculous. Uh, yeah, at one time, he said he flew back and forth uh, between the West Coast and East Coast on an SR-71 as a co-pilot. Well, first of all, you can look at the logs of the SR-71 pilots and co-pilots and guest riders, and it lists every pilot, co-pilot, and everybody had a ride along. Everybody. He's not on the list. I check. I have friends to check. I have SR-71 pilots. Okay, now. Uh, he met his wife, I think it's Marcia McDowell or whatever, uh, uh, as a parole officer. Uh, she was there on drug charges. She was indicted on drug charges. Uh, then she spent 12 years in the PBX department of the Mirage Hotel in Las Vegas. But she says that was just a cover job. Okay. She's head of the MJ-12 with her husband, and uh, she's dealing cards in the Mirage Hotel. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I believe that. Bullshit, I don't. We, uh, Brent said, we asked Mirage, I mean, Alexander said, we asked the Mirage Hotel if they knew they had a secret agent working for them for a cover job. Well, they do now, because they important them anyway. <laughs> Marcy McNeil, another secret operative, who solicited our coverage for a few times, is seeing the video she uncovers a space probe from Frenchman Mountain and then meticulously dissects its sophisticated electrical tape and tubing. Well, I'm telling you something. Space probes don't use electrical tape. I mean, there's many types of of extruded materials for insulation, metallical bonding, uh, even types of soldering bonding, they don't use electrical tape. Uh, I haven't seen a hell of a lot of rubber tubing since titanium tubing and stainless steel tubing work so much better. And rubber tubing uh, has something called uh, uh, biodegradation. So those two little statements a lot are lies. Uh, everybody declined uh, the interview request from these people. But his mother, uh, some people allegedly says he borrowed huge amounts of money for her and he hadn't heard from her in 12 years according to her own testimony. And the funny thing is, get this, quote, this is the bu biggest bullshit story I've ever heard in my life. Anybody that actually believes this guy should be ashamed of themselves. I never worked at Tonopah. I never met this knucklehead. Now, when Lazar's saying Tonopah, he's alleging to S4 at Tonopah. Because he had an uncle that worked there, and that's where he got all his stories from that he made up about S4 and aliens and the underground base and all that. Uh, his sticker, as investigated, shows it's a minimal level entry, which is very easy to get if you got any kind of job, like I said, even pelling peanuts or newspapers on the base. So, you know, 
I witnessed news did talk to UNLV where Burris really did have a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology. 